Hello folks, so you may or may not have seen the recent Jeremy Corbyn speech up on stage at the Glastonbury Festival and you know he's harping off about socialism and they're all clapping and cheering and Is it right that so many people are frightened of where they live at the moment having seen the horrors of what happened in Grenfell Tower? Hands tied behind the back an expertly aimed shot in the neck and the fall into a huge mass grave. It's quite sad and, you know, frightening at the same time just how misinformed people are about socialism. And a lot of people these days have fell into the trap and believing in this big con called democratic socialism and that was something that the Venezuelan people fell for. Between 1998, when they were sitting 99th on the Freedom Index, they declined and dropped right down to 176th on the Freedom Index. The simplest of weapons, acts of defiance against Venezuela's police and its president. And this was someday that Jeremy Corbyn praised, which is laughable to say the least considering the fact that the Venezuelan people uh, were going against Hugo Chavez and, and even then they were faced with the food shortages, they were faced with the blackouts and all sorts and a lot of folk don't understand these countries like the Scandinavian economies like I've pointed out many times before. The Scandinavian economies are social market economies, they're not social democracies, uh, they all have strong private sectors, strong free market principles, they have low levels of government regulation. Sure, they have the high tax rates and big welfare states but it's not that that's benefiting their economy. Prior to the 1960s, Sweden never had the big extensive welfare state, yet they had high levels of equality, and yet as soon as uh, Sweden laid on the big extensive welfare state, they dropped from fourth richest nation per capita GDP to the 14th richest. In other words, the welfare state had more or less uh, created the exact opposite side effect of what these people uh, claim it, you know, does so. It, it, because, let's face it, what's the main reason why folk are... What's the main reason why they vote for Jeremy Corbyn? What's the main reason why they support him? Well, they do so because of the fact that they think that Jeremy Corbyn is, you know, the, the way forward. They, th they think that, you know, it's it's all about more welfare statism. And if you, if you dare oppose the welfare state, then apparently you don't care about the poor. So this is what I mean, because the real world of socialism is not the world that these people believe. It's, it's all well to believe in something, but what's, what use is that? What you're looking for is real world solutions, and these people don't seem to be interested in real world solutions to problems. And a fine example of that is they seem to detest Hong Kong's economic success. And I've never understood that logic. Hong Kong, between 1950 to 1997, closed the wealth gap between the rich and poor. Hong Kong had practically no natural resources, no minimum wage, extremely low levels of government regulation. It was a, an economy strongly free from government. The British government was extremely limited to what it could do in Hong Kong. It was basically a strong free market, and yet between 1961 to 1997, Hong Kong closed the wealth gap between the rich and poor, proven by the Gini coefficient. They seem to forget that Hong Kong was, well, handed back to China in 1997. There's quite a strong difference, in other words, I don't talk about Hong Kong after 1997 because it moved away from the free market. So it's important to make that distinction between Hong Kong then and now. But what's most important is these people will, will live in denial of its success and they'll try to point out the poverty in Hong Kong and I'm sitting thinking to myself, well, hold on a wee second here. The average household income in Hong Kong was about 5000 less than $5,000 in 1950, and yet today they've got an average household income of more than $55,000 plus. Um, 
how is that a failure? There's no such thing as an economy without rich and poor people. There's no such thing as an economy without exploitation. There's no such thing as an economy without corruption. That will always exist. And therefore, what I'm proposing to you is not to get rid of these things because that's impossible. It will never exist. What I'm, I'm um, offering is a solution which is proven to work best and, and proven from the likes of Hong Kong, Singapore, Chile when it was the fastest growing economy in South America, Sweden's most successful economic time period in their history. That's what I'm offering, is real world solutions to problems. Whereas these type of people, with the real world of uh, socialism... This is what buying food looks like in Venezuela. Waiting for hours. They live in denial of it. And this, and I've said before, to me, socialism is a mental health disorder. And the reason why it is is because a symptom of socialism is denial. Um, they live in denial of the failure of socialism everywhere. It failed in Denmark, it failed in Sweden, it failed in Norway, it failed in every country it touched. And it was because of rolling back on the socialist policies that led to those countries, shall I say, the Scandinavian economies doing better off. But it's interesting when he says we have a lot to learn from Sweden and Norway. Uh, we do have a lot to learn from those countries. Unfortunately, Bernie Sanders hasn't learned anything from those countries. Those countries proved that socialism failed, that it didn't work. That's why it is being dismantled in those countries. That's why the countries that he's talking about are moving in the opposite direction. That's why Sweden abolished their capital gains tax. That's why Sweden abolished their inheritance tax. You know, Sweden is moving in the opposite direction. You know, Sweden is a perfect example of the failures of socialism. You know, Sweden became very wealthy, uh, like many countries, before uh, they became socialist. But at, in their wealth, right, they began to feel guilty or, uh, you know, maybe they responsible. And they said, look, the government should guarantee uh, people certain benefits. Uh, and of course, when the government first enacted all this cradle the grave socialism, not that many Swedes took advantage of it because they were hardworking. They grew up in an era that didn't have uh, all of this socialism. And, and, and so it wasn't a big problem originally. But as new people were born and they grew up in this socialist environment, they didn't have the old work ethic that made the country so rich that they can afford the generosity of socialism. So then you had people growing up in socialism, and they were very much like the guy that we were talking about yesterday, the surfer uh, living on welfare. Sweden created a situation where it was so comfortable not to work, and the taxes on working were so high to pay for all the people that didn't work, that more and more people were just choosing a lifestyle of you know living off the government. And the country was going broke, as were Norway, Denmark. All the countries that adopted all this socialism were going broke. Now, guys like Bernie Sanders would look at a wealthy country in Scandinavia and see, oh, they're socialist. See, so socialism much work. No, they didn't get wealthy while they had these socialist policies. They only adopted the socialist policies after they achieved the wealth. So you have to have wealth to redistribute. Right. So they're wealthy. They made the mistake of adopting socialism. Guys like Bernie Sanders says, aha, socialism must be why they're rich when he's got the cart before the horse. Then they adopt socialism and the economy start to fail. They turn a success into a failure and now they have to get rid of it. And Bernie Sanders doesn't connect the dots. Can you show me one single mixed economy that could rival Hong Kong for what it achieved um, for economic efficiency and after all that is what you measure the success of an economy on. You measure the success of an economy based off of economic efficiency. Why? Because that's the purpose of why the study of economics exists. In other words, the reason why the study of economics came around is because economics is a question of how do we better improve the material standards of living of the masses, 
whilst using the fewest resources as possible, right? Because scarce natural resources, they don't, they don't, they don't last forever. Uh, they are not infinite. They are finite, and therefore, because there's not enough resources to go around everyone. The whole purpose of the study of economics is to find the most efficient style of economy possible that enables us to translate scarce natural resources into commodities to provide for the market without causing waste. That is the purpose of why the study of economics exists. And, and therefore, when you draw the comparison between the success of Hong Kong to that of any other economy, such as mixed economies, you can see the massive difference. Even if their argument is that a free market's never existed, you hold their feet to the fire and you say, okay then, let's compare it down to a question of scale then. You show me an economy that could rival how successful you know Hong Kong was for economic efficiency, for how free it was with regards to economic freedom. Because what you can see in recorded history, folks, what's been so crystal clear is that every economy that moved in the opposite direction, that moved in the, in the face of government intervention, uh, strong mixed economies, we're talking about economies with, with a strong public and private sector, those economies ed ended up in an economic slowdown such as, for example, what happened in Chile. It was once the fastest growing economy in South America. In stepped Michelle Bachelet, who, a hardcore socialist, said herself that she wasn't uh, about to roll back on the success of the free market. Uh, she ended up introducing uh, the socialist policies and their, their economy began to slow down. History's been so crystal clear of that. It was so cr uh, crystal clear that it was the same story in, in Sweden. And so that's why you hold their feet to the fire and you say, you show me an economy that was as free as Hong Kong. Um, you show me an economy that could rival Hong Kong for that economic success. Because when you compare the alternative to the likes of what Hong Kong was uh, prior to the 1997, when you look at Hong Kong in that period, it was vastly successful and no economy today uh, could even touch it for economic efficiency, as I say. It lifted the masses out of poverty. It had practically no natural resources, no minimum wage, extremely low levels of government regulation. You know, it was a, an economy that uh, closed the wealth gap between the rich and poor. And uh, this is why you have to question the logic of, of these type of people who argue against success and I will never understand that logic um, because if you really cared about the poor, if you really cared about you know real world solutions, why would you stand against any sort of economic success? It's, it's all nonsense when you, you hear people trying to differentiate socialism uh, basically from its goal and I've had many arguments with folks um, and one of the arguments and to show you how dangerous the mindset is um, the first thing you have to understand is this and that is that those who ignore history are deemed to basically repeat history <laughs> Oh, <laughs>